Do you know, the best thing Garmin make is not the Fenix, even though I wear it all the time. It's not, it's not the Edge, even though I use it all the time. It's this. This is the best thing that Garmin make. The Garmin Varia Rear Light Radar Combo is by far the best thing they make. You should have one. I don't mean, hey, you should give it a go, try it. I mean, you should have one. Like, you should wear a seatbelt in a car or you should wear a helmet on a motorbike. You should have one of these. The rain has finally stopped. Okay, so it looks pretty normal. It weighs about 70 grams, so it's certainly not the smallest unit out there. Comes with a bunch of fittings to attach it to any seat post. I got one for my Trek mountain bike, one for my Cervelo with the weird shaped carbon seat post. It is bright enough to be seen a mile away, which is of limited value to me on a bike. I'm not quite sure why they measure light in terms of how far away you can see it for a bicycle light. I'm not bringing jets into land. I recently had an LED upgrade fitted to my Maglite torch that I keep beside my bed and that came with the warning that it will blind an intruder for three hours at 10 feet distance. That is how you should be measuring all lights. Either way, this is very bright, certainly bright enough. It will give you six hours constant, which is how I use it. Flashing gives you 16 hours. There's a couple of other settings in between. Anyway, it's pretty straightforward for a regular rear light but as a radar, it is something else altogether. Let's go back a step. I am a new rider, and even worse, I'm a new rider on a spaceship triathlon bike that doesn't like to go round corners, it doesn't like to swerve, it doesn't like to do anything really, it just wants to go in a very fast, straight line with somebody competent on top of it. And it has none of those options, because I'm riding the thing. If there's something in the road, a manhole cover or a drain, and I have to swerve around it, I'm not comfortable doing so, because I don't know what's coming up behind me. I can look over my shoulder, but looking over my shoulder on that thing is a technique that tends to induce swerving around, which I don't want to be doing in the first place. If there is crap built up in the side of the road, especially on country lanes, I tend to just ride in it rather than sitting out of it into the middle of the road, because again, I don't know what's behind me. Bottom line, not knowing what's behind me is compromising my riding. This thing was game changing when I fitted it. Let's go for a ride and I will show you what I mean. So at this point, my Garmin Edge on the bike is just displaying screen one that I use for a regular road ride. It doesn't really matter because the Garmin rear light will flash up its radar information on top of any screen you're looking at. So you can just set your Garmin up to do whatever you would normally have it do. The radar data will then just get added on top. That little white radar signal in the top right corner tells me I'm hooked up to the rear light. If for any reason I lose the signal, for example, if the battery did run out on the rear light, then it glows red instead. So in the background, we have a white van coming off that roundabout behind me. And any second now, there we go, it pings up on the radar. The screen glows orange to tell me of an approaching vehicle at normal speed. And the vehicle is then shown as a little white dot on the screen. As the vehicle gets closer, the dot moves closer towards me. It's incredibly straightforward. And there's now a second car coming to view, so it's showing me the second dot representing the second car behind that one. And as both cars go past, the screen turns green to show me that it is all clear behind. It is incredibly straightforward. That, in a nutshell, is exactly what it does, and it does it brilliantly. Now, in this next clip, without the roundabout behind me, the radar has got a much clearer view going much further back, and so it picks up this car while it is still way behind me. And as it approaches, it detects that there are a bunch of cars behind that as well, and it shows them up as multiple dots. How is it seeing multiple cars that far back? I have no idea. Radar magic. Now, at this point, if I was riding on the aero bars on the tri bike and I knew there was a bunch of cars coming behind me, unless the road was very clear, very straight, and I felt very comfortable with cars going past, I'd come off of them. I'd come up onto the regular bars. I'd be more in control, more confident. I'd let those cars go past. As soon as the screen grows green again, I know it's all safe, and I can get back down onto the aero bars and off I go again. Now, I don't use the app because I always have the Garmin Edge running on my bike whenever I'm riding, but I had a little play with it just for the purpose of this video to see how it worked, and I was really impressed. To be honest, if I was cycling to school or commuting to work or something, and I had a phone, I would happily use that instead of bothering with a Garmin. In fact, the phone, for the purpose of purely displaying the radar information, is probably more clear and easier to read. Very straightforward, it turns yellow to indicate a car is coming, 
Couple of bars show there are two cars there. Once they've gone past, it glows green again. Very, very straightforward. It is eyes in the back of your head. I have never had it give me a false alert, and more importantly, I've never had it miss a car that was there that it didn't detect. People will say, and they are right, it doesn't replace looking over your shoulder. But there are times when looking over my shoulder repeatedly is just not safe. For example, if I'm coming up to take a right turn and pull out into traffic, if there are a bunch of cars behind me and I can see it on my radar, I can just slow down, wait for them to pass. When it says it's clear, I can then look and off I go. If I don't have the radar, I'm constantly checking over my shoulder, waiting for it to become clear and repeatedly looking over my shoulder on that bike is simply not safe compared to knowing there's stuff there and not bothering to do that. It also makes me a more courteous rider. If I'm cycling down little country roads where the edge of the road is filled up with mud and stones and rubbish, I can sit out into the centre a bit more, confident that it's clear behind me, if the radar says it is. I can then pull over when cars do show up, or if it's not safe to do so, I can wait until I can pull over and then even signal them past because I can see it's clear ahead and the radar tells me they're there waiting behind me. Alternatively, with no radar, I either ride down the crappy section when I might not need to because the road could be empty, or I sit in the middle and just hope no one's behind me. And if they are, tough luck, I don't know they're there. They're just piling up behind me, getting annoyed at the idiot cyclist. It comes with the option of having it as a radar only. Don't know why you do that, you need a light, so why double up on things strapped to the back of your bike? You can also get the Garmin display for it. A few quid on eBay will get you a Garmin Edge and that gives you far more data and information. Or hook it up your phone, as I've already shown, that works brilliantly anyway. In summary, get one. If you ride a bike, have this. If someone you care about rides a bike, get them this. I would put this up with a helmet in terms of things that I will simply not go on a bike without on the road when there's cars about. In fact, I've ridden a bike for a lot of my 47 years off and on, and I've never fallen off and hit my head ever. But I have cars flying past at 60 miles an hour every time I go out. So this is right up there in terms of safety features. Highly, highly recommended. And then, there are these. These aren't quite so highly recommended. When I said in my last video that I'd got them, somebody immediately dived in and said, ha ha, you idiot. That's not literally what they said, but that's what they meant, I could tell. I don't think Garmin make a product that has had more issues and complaints and uh, annoyed buyers. Versions one and two, and even the early versions of this version three, dropping signal, water getting into the innards. However, I bought them. Why did I buy them? Well, first of all, I wanted power meter pedals. Actually, let's go back a step. I wanted a power meter because I'm using the Wahoo Kicker bike and train the road, and that's brilliant. It tells me exactly how much power to ride uh, for how long, and it's all very straightforward, and I just follow the instructions. If train the road says, if you want to do this, you can do it outside, go cycle at 200 watts for an hour, I don't know what that means. So I wanted a power meter. I wanted pedals because it means I can jump between bikes with them. In reality, I'm probably not going to do that very often but I like the idea that I can. And there's a couple of alternatives to Garmin that I did consider, and in fact, I was incredibly close to buying the alternatives, and then I went with Garmin. And to be honest, it was pretty much because they're a rear light. I was so impressed with their rear light, I thought, do you know what, those guys deserve the benefit of the doubt. I hope I am not wrong. It is very early days, but I've had a little play with them, I've hooked them up to the bike, and they do do what Garmin does very well, which is connect to everything incredibly simply. And in typical Garmin style, it shows me more information than I know what to do with. There's some interesting stuff in there, actually. Left foot, right foot balance. Uh, at what point in the pedal stroke am I generating power? In other words, am I just pushing down and not pulling up? And basically, am I cycling badly? A whole host of stuff that I'm sure as I get more into using them will become more fascinating than it is at the moment. Right now, it's just pretty colours. Will they turn out to be a good long-term purchase? Who knows? Let's hope so. I will update as I use them more and more. So, time will tell on those. Time does not need to tell on this. This works right now. Go buy one. Hopefully you find it useful and interesting. Like and subscribe if you do, because that is good for me. Next video is going to include both of these things, because I'm racing the P3X at a duathlon. Actually, will it include both of these things? It will include the pedals, because I've got to pedal the bike, I know that much. I'm not sure if it will include the rear light. It is a road race, there is traffic, it's not close to traffic. The answer is one of two things. Either, obviously, you have a light on your bike because you are riding in traffic. I'm hoping that is the answer. Safety first, 
how on earth could you think otherwise? But I'm a little bit wondering if people say, no, it's a race, hardcore all the way, you've got a carbon fibre spaceship bike, why weigh it down with 70 grams of this? And I'm going to turn up with my flashing light amongst those hardcore types and look like, I don't know what. Actually, I do know what I'd look like. I would look like I looked like when I was 12 and my mum bought me a gigantic uh, flagpole that actually lit up, had batteries and it glowed. And it went on the back of my bicycle to cycle to school on. And she said, that's for safety. And it was safe in the sense that no car ever knocked me down. Obviously on arriving at school, I obviously then got beaten senseless for having a light up flag on the back of my bike. I don't want to look like that. 